Until today, the many beta exhibitions that I attended, I noticed that each organizer's team created a set of criteria in which the judges would have to steer during the trials, and they were all different ones from each other. Many of these criteria mix concepts related to colors, the color arrangements, and the betas formats. This mixture of criteria in nothing assists the judges in assessing of the exposed betas, but also, and the more important, make it difficult the interpretation and understanding of these evaluations results on the part of exhibitors about the quality of their exposed betas, what are their strengths and their weaknesses. With this lecture, I intend to show several points that should be taken into account in any of these two situations, or to lay the foundations to build a set of clear and consistent rules to facilitate to the judges better assess the exposed betas and also more quickly, or to guide the creators when choose a beta for their genetics works. I am Beta Khalil Chivita Rizzi, amateur creator and scholar on the beta genetics for many years and I am sure this video will be quite useful. We have three big sets of beta features. One connected with the colors distributions of the phenotype. Other connected with the phenotype formats, and finally, other connected with the phenotype aesthetics. That is, all betas should be evaluated separately as to regard color distributions, as the format that the phenotype is displaying, and about the aesthetics of this format, which involves, not only the aesthetic balance itself as also, the temperament, the health, and the structural failures of the beta, namely, show without pastoral balance in the aquarium. For example, Present the caudal peduncle fallen relative to an imaginary horizontal line through the mouth until the middle of the caudal fin, as if there was a weight that forced down the caudal peduncle. To present bumps or recesses in the body. To present steam belly in males or females without oocytes. To present ruffled scales. To have swimming bladder disorder. That is, by observing the beta, it does not present its longitudinal line, from the mouth to the middle of the caudal fin, horizontally, and bent over and hanging down to the caudal peduncle side, resembling a boo. As if the beta was always looking at the surface, preparing to an imminent jump, the so-called jumping betas. Swimming with difficulty, shaking itself in some cases, to present any kind of swelling, in the eyes, in the mouth, in the gills, or eroded fins, or with fungus, or lack of scales, or presenting white or golden inflamed dots, etc. To present asymmetry, front or side, in the gills when expanded. To present asymmetry between the pectoral fins, or between the pelvic fins to present at least one twisted fin, to present the absence of at least one of the fins, to present disproportionate dorsum, remembering, or a rhinoceros concave dorsum, or a dolphin's convex dorsum, or sometimes remembering a moray dorsum. We will initially start talking about the color distributions in the betas. Can have betas with a single color. The so-called, solid, can have betas with a color in the body and other on the fins, the so-called bicolor, and can have betas with a color distribution that does not fit in any of the previous two classifications, the so-called multicolored. However, note these betas. They have two colors but or they are scattered throughout the beta or mixed on the fins or have a butterfly arrangement. Therefore, do not fit in the definition of bicolor. By exclusion, they will fit in the multicolored class. That is, a beta with two colors may not be a bicolor.
Now let us address another big set of details, the beta formats. They are. The beta may display short films. The so-called blackout. Or long films. The so-called long films. The beta may display only one caudal lobule, the so-called single tail. Or two caudal lobule, the so-called double tail. The beta may display the caudal, or like a veil. Or rounded. Or in delta. And in this last scissors format, found three types of openings of caudal fin. Super delta, with opening less than 180 degrees. Half moon, with opening equal to 180 degrees. And over half moon, with opening greater than 180 degrees. The beta may display the borders of the fins with spikes. The so-called, crown tail. Or without spikes. The beta may display accented cutouts on the edges of the fins, resembling the feather shape, the so-called feather tail. The beta may present many folds in the tissue of the fins, the so-called rose tail. Or may present a flat tissue, without any folds. The beta may display the pectoral fin super developed, when compared to the remaining set of fins, the so-called dumbo and big ear. And finally, the beta can present giant, with much bigger lengths than common bettas in presenting more body mass. As to the details specifically related to the aesthetic balance, we may observe the relationships between body size and the set of fins. The width of the caudal peduncle. The width of the dorsal peduncle. And in the case of double tail, it may be noted. The symmetry between the fins dorsal and the anal, one must looks like the other as if reflecting in a mirror. The symmetry between the caudal lobules. Again, one must looks like the other as if reflecting in a mirror. Then we can summarize what until now was shown as follows. We have the sets of features. Within each rectangle can only have a single feature manifesting at a time. For example, or the beta is solid or is bicolor or is multicolored. The same beta cannot be simultaneously solid and bicolor. Let us delve into the details of each point until now presented. Let us start detailing the characteristics set relative to the beta color distributions. In the solid betas, the desirable is the beta presents the single color of the phenotype in a single hue. However, it can present itself in different tones. In solid and bicolor, the pectoral fins, preferably, should present the same color of the other fins, or colorless. Never a different color of the remaining set of fins. There should be no infiltration of different colors in the body and or on the fins, whether in the form of iridescent sparkles, scratches, stains, or spots or dark lattice on the body, or even coloring failure on the fins. If the beta has any type of mask, that is, or the head completely covered in color, or only presenting some colored scales, this should be presenting the same color as the rest of the body of the beta. And finally, must not have any marbling, or red loss, under the action of genes, marble and red loss, respectively. Both the criterion of judgment, or in the specialized exhibition, or when in choosing a beta by the breeders, 
should be given preference to full mask bettas instead those with partial masks. And bettas with partial mask, instead the no mask bettas. Note that I am talking about full mask, partial mask, half moon, over half moon, veil tail, etc. All of those characteristics are determined by genetic traits that can be handled, until some extent, to improve our lineages. In my course on the betas genetics, I explain in detail, and continuous manner, as these characteristics, and many other, of course, behave genetically, and how can manipulate them, in a practical way, in their selecting works. Access betaproject.com, for further information if desired. Continuing. We talked about the details that must be observed in the solids and bicolors. Now, let us talk about the multicolored betas. Within this subgroup, we can consider two categories of multicolored. Those with any colors distribution in the phenotype, the so-called common multicolored and those with well-defined colors and known arrangements. The special, since always arise with a high frequency in many selection works and that settled over time. I refer to these colors distributions as classical colors arrangements. They are, the pineapple, the chocolate, the dragon, all kind, the salamander, all kind, the mustard gas, the black orchid, the black devil, the black copper, and the red gold. Therefore, from the point of view of color arrangement, we have solid, bicolor, and multicolored, and within this, the subdivisions, the common multicolored, and the multicolored presenting one of these classic arrangements, pineapple, chocolate dragon, salamander, mustard gas, black orchid, black devil, black copper, and red gold. Here fits an observation. This list will always be open as always will continue to arise new arrangements that, in time, be able to fix and fall to the liking of the creators, who will disseminate and should be included in this relationship. Therefore. The classification of what is a multicolored with a classic arrangement of colors, should be reviewed from time to time. Another observation. Did you notice that we did not comment until now, about the question of the beta be dark or light, be glossy or matte, or be pigmented or iridescent? This is because when working with betas belonging to one of the presented groups, solid, bicolor or multicolored. The intensity and the brightness of the colors arrangement only should be taken into account by the creator in terms to achieve a particular desired goal. From the point of view of an exhibition, these details should not be taken into account in judging a beta. That is, it is indifferent whether the beta is clear or dark, whether it is brilliant or matte, etc. Therefore, if the creator, for example, is developing a beta lineage with bright colors, he should preferably choose bettas under the influence of the genetic trait called blonde, lighting the present color. The same guideline applies to lineages with pearly bettas, under the influence of the genetic factor called opaque, through a whitish dust mixed with the bright color, resulting in a pearly appearance or even completely matted. Or in works with dark bettas, so-called Milano, featuring a lot of black pigmentation mixed in the colors. We talk about the names of some special phenotypes. However, what should be the descriptions of the most important features that define better these phenotypes? Let us start with the color arrangement titled Pineapple. The pineapple are non-red bettas, presenting a greenish-gray body, the color of the peel pineapple, hence its name, and a set of yellowish or yellowish-green fins. 
may present a thin black outline around the scales, seeming a black lattice on the body, as well as, in some cases, the same thin black outline around the fins. Let us talk about the color arrangement entitled chocolate. The chocolate are non-red bettas with brownish hue body or with the coffee with milk color and the fins yellowish or greenish yellow. May present the same thin black outline around the scales like the pineapples seeming a black lattice on the body as well as in some cases the same thin black outline around the fins. Note that both the pineapple as the chocolate could be fit respectively in the bicolor and solid classes since they present fully yellow fins and not greenish yellow fins. As we should not fit a same lineage sometimes within a class sometimes within another class I refer sometimes belonging to the solid or bicolor class sometimes belonging to the multicolored class it is more prudent and sensible always keep such lineages within the special multicolored arrangements class. Let us talk about the color arrangement titled dragon. The dragon are bettas consisting of three main factors. A pigmented color on the body, called base color. May be, red, black, yellow, pinkish, orange, Cambodia or one of the both special color arrangements, the pineapple or the chocolate. Over this body pigmented color, have a mantle with one of these iridescent colors. White, blue, green, or copper, all of them presenting a strong opaque, and lastly, preferably should present this sense of scale convexity. I believe that is due to the gradual accumulation of opaque sediment over them. It is only a feeling, an observation. Fewer opaque dust means better dragon quality. About the types of mantle, may be partial, by selecting only part of the body that will of the pectoral fins, until the caudal peduncle base, or total, including the head. Observe those two black dragon. Compare this better with this as regards the quality of the dragon arrangement. Although this better is long fin, and this applicate, those traits must not influence in the definition of which of them will fit as having the better dragon arrangement. However, we observe that this black dragon has a better definition in the colors arrangement shows itself more clean, with best color drawings, when comparing with the other beta, and presents a better mask. Regarding the definition of the dragon markup, this dragon has a strong opaque mantle only covering the body, while in this dragon the opacity escapes, spreads, it leaks and breaks into completely the remainder of the beta, in some way, blurring the remaining colors, in addition, the butterfly arrangement in the second dragon does not belong to the definition of this classic type. In other words, for everything has been reviewed, it is notorious the best quality of this dragon arrangement comparing with this beta. However, what would be the ideal dragon arrangement? As an ideal model, which is something subjective and therefore debatable, we can imagine that the ideal black dragon arrangement would present the fins very black, without any transparency, translucency, iridescent sparkles, scratches, stains, or colored opaque dust covering the fins. In addition, a strong iridescent mantle covering completely the beta's body, including the head, face and mouth, that is, the beta must be a full mask giving the impression of the same, be it a bicolor beta. However, pay attention. It is only a feeling because in the dragon arrangement as in the body two distinct colors. A pigmented base. In this example of dragon beta, the red color, and on it an iridescent mantle. And in the bicolor arrangement we know has only one resulting color on the body.
or could think about the black dragon as described earlier, however, showing the radial scratch is clean, well defined, always in the same color of the mantled iridescence. What has been said here about the black dragon goes for any other dragon arrangement colors. Note these dragon phenotypes. As you can see, there are a lot of them. To conclude the discussion on the dragon, let us analyze the strange dragon infiltrations. Note that this black dragon has reddish copper infiltration on the fins, respectively, in the dorsal, caudal and anal, and so, even if it has been chosen as dragon arrangement those with radial scratches on the fins, this black dragon should be avoided as a matrix for work in the lineage of black dragon because these red infiltrations should not occur in a black dragon arrangement. And this rule of weird colors infiltrations goes for all kinds of dragon. Let us talk about the color arrangement entitled salamander. The salamander are multicolored bettas that feature a same color on the body and fins, or pigmented, or iridescent, or a homogeneous mixture of both, and a butterfly. However, the pectorals can exhibit different from the other fins, completely covered with the color present in the butterfly of the other fins. The classic salamander features the head not exhibiting the same resulting color composition of the rest of the body. However, some newer salamander are beginning to present the same color composition of the rest of the body to the head, that is, they are full mask. The salamander present a butterfly. And this means that all fins must present this iridescent color outline around the fins, including the pectoral, or the betty cannot be considered as possessor of the butterfly arrangement, be it with a thin outline usually white or bluish white, or in the form of wider bands. Moreover, the best salamander displays also a colored outline around the mouth following always the color of the butterfly, appropriately called lipstick. In the case of the body color be pigmented, red, pinkish, yellow, we have a steel blue dust infiltration on this pigmented color. In the case of the body color be iridescent, or mixed evenly pigmented with iridescent color, for example, the red color mixed with blue, causing the lavender color, we can only have on this body color, a whitish powder spread. Now let us talk about the color arrangement entitled mustard gas. The mustard gas are multicolored bettas with a dark royal blue body, or even a steel blue, yellowish green fins, with a dark royal blue or black butterfly, whether in the form of a thin outline around the fins or with the wider band. Some mustard gas, rather than to present the yellowish green fins, they present in the yellow color, or even in the orange color. Note these mustard gas. These are more homogeneous in terms of distribution of colors than these. However, this crown tail shows remnants of the marking feature of mustard gas arrangement, because, on the edges of the fins, before the spikes, yet exhibit a slight thin bluish outline. However, this mustard gas with this smoky dark butterfly, no longer presents the bluish infiltrations in all the fins, which certainly quite detracts the presence of this classic arrangement. Let us talk about the color arrangement entitled Black Orchid. The Black Orchid, are multicolored bettas, that have the dark body, and on it, an iridescent infiltration. Being this infiltration, steel blue, or turquoise green, and the fins showing a black bottom color, and on it, the same iridescent radial scratches present in the body. Should not present any other infiltration different from the black color. That is, should not present any infiltration in these colors, reddish, yellowish, or orange, and much less any marbling.
This bed a present success of iridescence covering almost all the body, which quite detracts the presence of this classic arrangement. Let us describe the color arrangement titled Black Devil. In general, this multicolored arrangement presents the dark body, most of the time, black, usually with an iridescent steel blue infiltration and red fins with the black butterfly. Most of the black devil exhibit the crown tail format fins, as these bettas. But we find this color arrangement in other bettas with different formats of fins. In addition there is any genetic relationship which binds a particular color's distribution, be it solid, bicolor or multicolored, with the specific phenotype format, be it crown tail, placat, long fin, double tail, giant, etc. Let us talk about the color arrangement entitled Black Copper. The black copper are multicolored bettas that have a dark coppery body where this coppery could be in dark nuances, jade, golden, purple, or with these mixed dark coppery nuances, and the fins showing brighter radial scratches in the same coppery tone of the body. Should not present any other infiltration different from the black color, which is inherent in the black copper arrangement, and much less any butterfly or marbling. Let us talk about the color arrangement titled Red Gold. The Red Gold are Red Cambodian bettas that have the body covered with the sepia transparent layer. The sepia transparent layer can be, or not, mixed with the strong opacity on the body, and the light opacity on the fins. Should display on the fins a brighter radial golden coppery infiltration should not display any butterfly. At this point in our lecture, we will remember what we have seen so far, about the Betta's phenotypes characteristics set. With regard to colors distributions. Solid, bicolor, and multicolored. In addition within this last class, the subdivisions. The common multicolored beta and the classical multicolor arrangements. As for the betas formats, we should observe if the beta has short fin or long fin, if the beta has only one caudal lobule or two, if the beta has one of the caudal formats, bell tail, round tail, or delta tail. In addition, within this last class, the delta fin, we have Super Delta, Half Moon, and Over Half Moon. If the beta has the border of the fins with spikes shape, or smooth, or has the format of a feather. If the beta can present many folds in the tissue of the fins, called Rose Tail, or Flat, presenting no folds. If the beta has the pectoral fin super developed when compared with the remaining fins, called Dumbo and Big Ears. Or if the beta is giant, with much bigger lengths than common bettas and presenting more body mass. Let us delve a little more in some structural details with respect to the crown tail, to the dumbo and big ears, and the giant bettas. Let us talk about the crown tail. If the beta presents only small spikes on the edge of the fins, that is, many tissue among these spikes and very little spikes. It should not be considered a crown tail beta. They are the so-called comb tail bettas. Shows the relationships between the length of the tissue and the length of the spike bigger than one. In this way, the crown tail will appear balanced. The desirable crown tail, with the relationship close to one, between the tissue length and the spike's length, or tattered, with the relationship smaller than one, between the tissue length and the spike's length. In the judgment of the quality of a crown tail, in addition to these observations we comment earlier, should not be taken into account initially the format of these spikes. If they are straight, or curved, and even how they are grouped on the edges of the fins, 
if in pairs, instead of four, etc. What should prevail at trial is the relationships between Tishwin's spikes and the integrity in these spikes. Missing spikes, broken, or twisted, are serious fouls. One last note about the crown tail. Fewer branches on the fins, better the crown tail aesthetics. The best are two R. They are cleaner, showing more definition. Note these crown tail with quite close relationships between the length of the tissue and the length of the spikes. Let us talk about the details of the bedis with exacerbated pectorals. According to the definitions of the Beta Society of Malaysia, to learn whether the Beta is Dumbo, or Big Ear, divided the body of the Beta into three equal parts. If the length of the pectoral fins is greater than the existing remaining ones in Betas, and reaches up to one third of the body, the Beta should be classified as Dumbo. If the length of the pectoral fins exceed one third of the body, it should be classified as a big ear. As for the giant, we must pay attention to three points. The total length of the beta. The exacerbated body mass. And the body format. Since giant bettas can arise with weird formats to those with which we are used to seeing in normal bettas. In principle, we must consider the length of the giant measured from the mouth to the middle of the caudal fin, in the order of 2.56 inches for more, for placot, and 4 inches for more, for the long fin. In terms of body mass, the giant bettas must present at least a body mass of 1.5 to 2 times higher than that present in common bettas. As for the body format, may arise giant bettas with weird formats when compared to those we are used to seeing in the current normal bettas. Such most common deformities, or weird formats, mainly occur in the giant head, or present the concave back, resembling those of a rhinoceros, with a wide body between the dorsal and anal peduncles and a small head compared to the volume of the body. Or present a head resembling that of a moray eel, or even other formats that make them look like weird when compared to normal bettas. As a final summary of this lecture, the following points should be noted in any betta, preferably in this order. Initially, if it is healthy. If it has structural failures in the whole body and fins. If there are aesthetic balance between the body size and the set of the fins, and a better temperament. Then we analyze the color's distribution and the shape of the phenotype. However, if we choose a better for a particular work, we should note in addition to those factors, other factors related to what we want to achieve, such as. If the lineage is iridescent, if it is pigmented, or both, if it has opacity, if it is dark, or if it is blonde. Here I close this presentation, and, as I said earlier, I am sure this video will be quite useful. See you.